My name is Alexander Rubino, ACE. I'm nominated this year for Deadliest Catch for Outstanding Picture Editing for an Unstructured Reality Program for Deadliest Catch Episode 1901, Call of the New Generation. I like working on Deadliest Catch so much because you're telling the real stories of these real fishermen doing the deadliest job on the planet, or one of the deadliest jobs on the planet. And it's a world that so many people are unfamiliar with, and that so many people are drawn to, which is how now in our 19th season, people are still watching this show, still liking the show, and we get recognition, like Emmy recognition or Eddie recognition. It just feels really good to be a part of something that so many people enjoy. The episode that was submitted for nomination is the first episode of the 19th season. It's 1901, Call of a New Generation. It's a good introduction to the series for somebody that's never seen it before. Maybe they're voting in the Emmys for the first time. And what's the show about? Well, the first episode of a season lays it out for you, shows you what storylines we're trying to document over the course of the season. Because what they don't realize is, when we start editing the first episode, we have not finished shooting the season yet. We don't know what happens next. Because it's very much a fly in the wall documentary, we are showing things as they happen over the course of about 15 weeks, which accumulates about 47,000 hours of footage that we have to manage, that our small army has to manage. And this season's premiere episode literally and figuratively starts off with a bang. We have an explosion within the first few minutes of the episode, and we use the classic Bon Jovi song, Wanted Dead or Alive, which has been the theme song of the series uh, pretty much since its inception. How I found out about my nomination was I logged in to the Emmy site and I was watching the live stream of some of the categories being announced and with so many categories, I can't include all of them in a 15 minute broadcast, I think it was 15 minutes. About 10 minutes into it, I went to the Emmy website and I downloaded the PDF of all the categories. But I thought, wait a second, the live stream's not done yet, is this real? And I start looking at the PDF and I do a find function and look for my name, R-U-B-I and it shows up on the paper, but still the live stream's not done and I don't know if this is really, if I'm really seeing what I think I'm seeing or if I'm seeing something old, but it, it was real and my wife and my son got really excited and I called my dad and I called my mom and I called my grandma even to tell her about it and then I emailed the team, I took a picture of the, the screen where I saw our names in the document and emailed the team and then I searched deadliest and realized we're not only nominated for editing, we're nominated for sound mixing and cinematography. And I was so happy to do that, to tell everyone about that. And I shouted it from the rooftops, which in 2023 meant I posted it to social media so everyone could hear about how happy I was that the show was recognized in this way again for the 59th time, 57th, 58th, and 59th nominations this year. There are many tools in Meeting Composer that I use when I work on Deadliest Catch. Uh, one of them is selecting unreferenced clips in the bin. And why do I do that? Because I don't want to repeat music cues throughout the project. And when you're working with multiple editors on the same project, and we're all pulling from the same bin of cues from our composer, Didier Rochu, you want to make sure that you're not doubling up, you're not using the same stems, you want everything to have a unique sound. So that's a very helpful tool for me. We employ Animat also with Avid Media and Composer, and the reason why we do that is because a lot of our footage comes from stationary cameras. There's at least four or five stationary cameras mounted on each boat that are rolling 24-7, which is how we accumulate so many thousands of hours every season, or at least that plays in part of it. And sometimes when we're using the stationary cameras, the cameraman, the camera person's mic might be in the shot a little bit or his hand or something that we just, is distracting to the audience. So we're able to use Animat sometimes to hide stuff like that. As an editor on each episode of Deadliest Catch, we are wholly responsible for the sound design. There is a re-recording mixer that's an invaluable part of our team, but to get to that re-recording mixer and to let our episodes lock and to have everybody approve it, we, we put in the music, we put in if we want to goose this, like if we want to enhance the sound effects a bit, we need to mix the dialogue, and we're on a ship, and there's a lot of loud noises on a boat. There's a constant hum in the wheelhouse of the boat from engines running, there's a constant hum from machinery on the deck, so it's up to us to isolate the best channel for the dialogue and mix it and make sure that everything sounds and looks great. Advice I would give someone for editing is to be very driven. You have to really love what you're doing to be able to sit with 
this material for 10 hours a day, 12 hours a day, 14 hours a day. And every place I've worked at and interned at for the past 23 years has used Avid Media Composer and it's been an invaluable tool for me on the job. And I need to know it super well because I have to perform at such a rate of speed on television to get the job done in the time allotted. I need to know the tool inside and out to do the job. And that's why Avid has been a great tool and a great resource for me and something that I'm always trying to expand my knowledge of.